big tech, as we've seen, has been collapsing in on itself over the past year or so, because most of these gigantic, um, super huge mega corporations like Facebook, Google, Instagram, which is part of Facebook, and now Spotify, we're just getting fat off all of us U.S. and, uh, well, really Western customers due to the lockdowns. If you look back at even, for example, Disney Plus, it reached like an all-time high for usership and the stock was at an all-time high when we were all locked down. It, I, I always say it was awfully convenient that Disney Plus launched like the same week that the entire world locked down. It's almost like Disney knew. Now, I'm not saying they knew, but I'm just saying it was convenient. All right, you hear that, YouTube? I'm not saying they did know. I'm saying it was convenient that all these home streaming services were launching right when we were all locked down. But Spotify, a company that gave enormous contracts to political hacks like Obama, um, or, you know, political people like Obama or um, uh, Meghan Markle, that grifter from the UK that I, I don't know. I don't know who the heck cares about Meghan Markle. Never heard of her. I mean, don't care what she has to say. She's some like Z-list actress. But for some reason, pretty, pretty, pr pr some, for some reason, all these companies are now collapsing and having massive firing, massive firings. We saw earlier this year, um, you know, Facebook laying off something like 14,000 employees, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, layoff back in October of 2023, Facebook had a massive layoff. We've seen layoffs at Google. Facebook laid off 10,000 jobs this year and also closed 5,000 job openings. So a switch of 15,000 people. Now Spotify will be slashing 17% of its workforce. That's like 1,500 people in the second round of cuts this year. I think the third, I think it might be the third round if I remember correctly. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe Joe Rogan should come over to Rumble. Uh, sorry, in, after a series of high-profile investments, including Joe Rogan, call her daddy, and Harry and Meghan, costing more than $300 million. Spotify has become the latest tech giant to announce major layoffs with the streaming giant CEO Daniel Ek announcing that 1,500 staff are being cut due to growth slowing dramatically following years of heavy investment in podcasting. Are we seeing the end of the, the podcast craze? That's difficult to say. I don't know if we could say that you know, unequivocally. Podcasts are still very, very popular. But what we do know is that a lot of these companies were way over investing in them. There was that ad agency, I forget exactly what they were called, that like owed Theo Vaughn hundreds of thousands of dollars. And uh, what's that gringo poppy guy? They owed him all sorts of money because they were throwing out all these minimum guarantees and then nobody watched. You look at a lot of these shows, they're utter just brain rot garbage. The $20 million, I think it was 20 or $30 million they paid for Call Her Daddy could not have possibly paid off. It just couldn't have. He writes, I recognize this will impact a number of individuals who have made valuable contributions. To be blunt, many smart, talented, hardworking people will be fired. According to the Financial Times, Spotify execs have been trying to cut costs since the company's expensive push into podcasting, which tried investors' patience. Since 2018, the company has spent over $300 million securing rights to podcasts by creators such as Joe Rogan, and Bill Simmons, not to mention the infamous deal Spotify struck with Harry and Meghan in 2020 for $20 million. And they never even produce an episode. They never, they never really even produce an episode. I think maybe they did one. $20 million. 
to hear Meghan Markle talk about how the only reason everyone gives a damn about her is because the, that balding ginger guy is slinging it to her every once in a while. Is that that's the only interesting thing Meghan Markle has to talk about is uh, that ginger guy's hairline, um, and and like that's maybe about it. In July, Harry and Meghan announced that they had parted way from Spotify after they signed a $20 million exclusive deal. The ending came of the deal just a year after the debut of the show, Archetypes, Archetypes, which boasted Serena Williams as the first guest. Spotify's head of podcast, Bill Simmons, who sold his ring, Ringer network to the company in 2020 for $200 million, blasted Harry and Meghan, calling them grifters for walking away in the deal. I wish I had been involved in the Megan and Harry leave Spotify negotiation. The effing grifters. That's the podcast. I would have launched with them. I have to get drunk one night and tell the story of the Zoom I had with Harry to try and tell him um, help with the podcast idea. It's one of my best stories. F them, the grifters. In January, Spotify said that it would be combining podcast networks with Paracast and Gimlet to its Spotify Studios operation. Other major investments saw um, the company buy podcasts such as the Joe Rogan Experience, which created controversy as many artists such as Neil Young demanded their music be removed from the platform because Joe Rogan thought for himself. Daniel Eck was forced into a defensive mode when the video emerged of Rogan repeatedly using the N-word. The CEO said in a message to staff that Rogan's racist language was incredibly hurtful and that the host was behind the removal of dozens of episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience. I remember when Joe Rogan said... You know, people, I think Joe Rogan is you know, definitely a net positive. All right, he's definitely a net positive, especially when it comes to, like, sanity. You know, I don't necessarily agree with every little thing he says and does, but, it, you know, he, he's generally a net positive. Um, I think that, you know, he hid behind all those episodes getting removed. You know, he acted like, oh, Spotify's not going to censor me. But, you know, we're not going to bring over, you know, I think it was something like 40 or 50 episodes, all controversial figures. You know, Sargon of Akkad, Milo Yiannopoulos, Alex Jones, Gavin McInnes, all these people, their episodes were not brought to Spotify. I actually, it's my prediction that Joe Rogan will likely leave Spotify. I think it's been limiting for him. I don't think his show is growing nearly as fast as it would have grown if it were on YouTube. Um... It's just true. Uh, I, I think that, you know, if you're like me, you know, when he moved over there, I'm like, I'm not getting a Spotify account. So I just don't watch Joe Rogan anymore. I used to watch all the, um, I used to watch all the, uh, you know, the clips and sometimes the full episodes, if it was somebody I really cared about, like maybe Elon or something like that when they're on YouTube. But I had no interest in downloading Spotify and signing up to Spotify. I know a lot of people obviously did, but I just didn't. And I think that it, it probably has slowed his growth because I never see his clips on YouTube anymore. YouTube has been aggressively pushing into the podcast scene. So I could absolutely see YouTube make a play to try and bring Rumble in or uh, bring Rogan in. Rumble famously offered Joe Rogan a $200 million deal to come to Rumble. I think that would be, I mean, an incredible boom for the platform. I don't think he will, um, but maybe. You know, one thing I can say is that Rumble won't make Joe Rogan delete episodes. Rumble wouldn't, you know, be censoring what kind of guests he have on. Obviously, as somebody who streams to Rumble Monday through Friday at 1 Eastern, you should definitely follow. Go to rumble.com, follow the quartering, at least tune into my live show. Um, it's different than my, you know, it's different than my standalone videos. But as somebody who you know, has tied their boat or tied their, you know, anchored them, not anchored, that's a negative term, but has like hitched their wagon to rumble. I think that would be absolutely amazing. I don't think that's ever going to happen, but you never know. In the third quarter, the company swung to a profit aided by price hikes. <laughs> that's what everyone's doing right now. You know, um, you have Disney Plus, Netflix, Hulu, everybody's raising their prices. And by the way, at a time when people have never had less expendable income, I mean, well, no, that's not true, but, um, you know, it's been very tight recently, you know, um, <coughs> excuse me. And so you can only keep raising prices so often. 
You can only keep this strategy so often. You see, by most metrics, we've been more productive but less efficient. We need to be both. I realize that for many, a reduction of this size will feel surprisingly large given the positive earnings report and our performance. We debated making smaller reductions through 2024 and 2025. Hey, they're doing what I recommend. Cut once, cut deep. And, you know, these companies, what happens is they get huge and they turn into these adult daycares. I mean, Elon famously let go of what? 70% of the staff? Like 70% of the staff that uh 70 percent of the staff that twitter had and like for the most part twitter hasn't changed these companies all um you know all brought in all these like woke weirdos and all this stuff and by the way i'm telling you that's who got fired that's who got canned they didn't fi- you think they fired the engineers no you think they fired the audio people no Do you think they fired the people that manage their website or their APIs or their business relationships? No, they fired the woke weirdos that, uh, you know, were boycotting their own company. That's who got fired. Like there's no question in my mind. That's who got canned. So, you know what? Good riddance to bad rubbish. I always knew these people were going to go and and I'm telling you their cuts are going to keep coming. YouTube's going to cut. Um, you know, all these big tech firms that got fat over the last five years suddenly have to lay off all these people. When you talk about Facebook firing 15,000 people, it's absolutely insane. This has been a, essentially a, a woke backfire of hiring these woke idiots. Who the hell wants to listen to Meghan Markle? Not me. So there's your Spotify news.